vlogmas day 11 hope you're all doing well wherever you want whatever you're up to today and it's a friday it's quite a cloudy day there's not much natural light in the house apart from this particular point by the window you get some light hope you're all doing well thank you for whoever takes all the time to watch my videos my vlogmas videos and that you're enjoying them you're leaving such wonderful comments that warm my heart every time i read them and that pushes me on to record more and we are doing it up to the 24th i think 24th i don't think i'll do christmas and i don't have much planned out today because i didn't feel well rested i didn't get enough hours of rest so i don't feel as energetic as i always do as if i always feel energetic in the morning no i'm not a morning person i don't feel as energetic but as the day builds up i get my i feel much better and more energetic so today i think i might be sewing up my christmas tree cutting because the christmas tree is naked it needs to be covered up and i don't have much rest planned out on friday it's like more like my day off because hubby takes care of dinner and i just take time to do what i want to do without much pressure definitely i'll be stepping out to pick my daughter from school and helping my son supervise his home learning but other than that i'll show you what i get up to today and finally the poof was finished now i want to sew up that cutting the christmas tree is cutting and i might cut up a few fab a few makes for the kids a few things i've been wanting to make from last month but i didn't do much sewing last month and this month I think I've also not done a lot of sewing for myself, but I'm going to see what I can get energy to do today. And I'll take you along with me. Come and join me. Maybe I could show you what I'm wearing. Today I'm wearing the Freya dress by Tilly and the Buttons. That comes in a stretch book. So we will stretch Tilly and the Buttons book. And I made the curl version. And I made the Freya dress in a cotton french terry fabric that i bought from girl charlie before they closed their store in the uk and it also comes above my knee hope that's visible and it's quite warmy it looks like it's just that cozy fabric the camera can't focus here and it's what you need in, on such cold days and i love to pair them up with boots such dresses it's an easy wear and it's quite comfortable to wear so that's what i'm wearing today and I have a cardi over it because even in the house it's still cold. It's not warm anywhere, but I'll let you know what I get up to today. We're Bye. going to go ahead and make our cutting, our Christmas tree cutting. And I'm using this fabric. I don't know its name. It's quite it's see-through, I could say. And it's sequined. I just picked it up this Saturday from Fabrics for All. I just wanted a gold or a red fabric with some sequins, some shiny fabric for my christmas tree cutting and it was actually very cheap it was three me three pounds a meter so i just bought a meter of that and i'm going to make an easy cutting i won't have any ties because i don't think i have much ribbons to use with it and also i had plans of lining the fabric with any plain red fabric or lining fabric unfortunately i didn't have enough of that and have not let that stop me because I'm not about to drive to the fabric store to buy lining for cutting. So I'm just going to go ahead, and this fabric doesn't fray at all. I'm just going to go ahead, cut out my circles, and then use bias binding to finish up the edges. Because I've tried to put it on against my Christmas tree and you can't see the brown carpet underneath. So it should be perfect really. This is going to be the simplest pattern or method of making this cutting to a point that we are not lining anything the other option would be you draw up your pattern on a piece of paper but i want this to be an easy make for anyone who wants to sew up their skirt this christmas i'm going to fold it into four let me try to get it focusing better and we're going to fold the fabric into four parts you just want the edges to meet up at least you know that it's all equal in, at all corners it won't be equal because the cutting process sometimes is not as straight as you would want it but you want it to meet up at the edges this is going to be the easiest because i honestly don't i just don't feel inspired to put in all the work and it's just a skirt a christmas tree skirt it's not a skirt i'm going to wear so i can get away with that Sorry for my friends who are perfectionists, but 
that was once me but sometimes i let some things be simple i want this to be your typical palette cleanser that doesn't have to be perfect hope that's clear in the camera so i'm going to go ahead and just cut around it and you could use a tape measure to gauge how much of it you want and i'll use this to be the basis the width the distance between this corner to this to be the basis for cutting the entire circle and here i could say i have 21 inches because i have 21 inches at that point that's the longest i can make the entire circle so i'll go ahead and mark off all the 21 inches all around and then cut it out okay let's start marking I'm using a fabric pen. I instead decided to use chalk because it marked better, so we are going to go ahead and cut out our circle if you can see from here we shall go ahead and cut it up voila we've cut out our circle then we shall go ahead and then cut out a little hole at the top here and we are not using any closures whatsoever, so it will be a plain, not a plain because it's a queen, but yeah, it will be your basic, your basic skirt. And we are going to just cut out two inches from the corner to two inches for the opening of our skirt. And it's easy to mark off because it's such a small bead that we are working with. So I'll still use chalk to mark it off. Hope it's clear. Just mark off two inches. I realized the chalk marked much better and because the color was showed much contrast as opposed to the blue marker. We shall cut it out also. You could as well go draw up a template on your on a piece of paper but i said it was such a simple thing and after this all we have is your round skirt <laughs> but with a small hole that couldn't go around your waist so we are going to go ahead and just cut down if you may tell that my fabric wasn't so white so some bits don't have the sequin but i'm glad that the salvage is also glittery has some glitter and shimmers on it so we shall go ahead and cut on the side because we want the side bit that we shall that will be open to be at the back of the Christmas tree so we can cut straight down yeah here we go we have our cutting almost ready and so I'm going to go ahead I've cut up some bias strips which I went ahead and sewed together I hope I have enough of this and then I'm going to go make some bias tape. Let me show you the options there. If you have any bias tape maker, just like this, can come in handy to make the bias tape you need. You need to use a flat iron, use it to make bias tape. Unfortunately, I'm not going to use this. I recently acquired a gadget. Honestly, that wasn't needed. It's not a necessity. But sometimes you just want to treat yourself to something. And this is an electric bias tape maker. I bought it off eBay. Unfortunately, this particular equipment has been discontinued. However, you can find one of random ones. This is by Simplicity. So when I bought it, I put it to a test and I recorded a video. I'll attach the link to this, the video of this review and unboxing video in the description box below. And also I'll add a link in the card so you can watch it. This particular one comes with this one inch bias tape. It's a single bias tape maker. 
but I was fortunate to look on eBay on Amazon and I found a three quarters one so I'm going to use this foot says pair and I know they come off extensively but because the machine is discontinued if I get a chance to get another it actually makes my step so fast that I don't have to iron it with this but either way any works many people swear by this that it's perfect you don't really need this I bought this it was a treat it was a bit pricey but I had to treat myself to something and sometimes you're allowed to treat yourself to a few things they don't have to be necessities all the time so I'm going to show you how I get along to I've instead made just a single fold I folded the fabric over itself and ironed it flat I could neither use this I realized the strips I cut off were quite so small to give me the bias binding with this three quarters inch bias attachment for this machine I also tried using these from my from this ordinary one the one the common one this ended up being quite big the strips were big for it and they were also too small for this to give me bias binding so I decided all that didn't work I just folded it over itself and and it flat so I'm going to attach this to the raw edges this facing the right side then I'll flip it over but I'm going to use very small seam allowance as I go all I want is to cover up the seams and then close them inside so I'm going to use a very small seam allowance so let me show you how I get along with this hi I'm back from school and I thought I'll treat the kids to some blueberry waffles they tend to love them much and I thought I'll also show you which recipe I use. I'll add the recipe in the description box below and I'm going to whip it up. It comes together pretty fast. I happen to have a waffle maker. I bought it for the panini maker section which is also a griller but it also came with extra plates for waffles and and a sandwich I think. I'll show you what it looks like later but right now we're going to whip up the waffle then I'll, after this, after fixing the waffles I'll finish up with my skirting because I had to leave halfway to go for school pickup so it's what I'm going to show you now the ingredients we shall need we shall need some milk of course milk some blueberries I'm going to use frozen blueberries because you can't find fresh blueberries right anywhere right now I have some butter two eggs some salt salt baking powder some sugar and of course some flour so let's go ahead and whip up this recipe but we need to first melt the butter so i'll be melting it in, in this at which i'll put over a saucepan This is supposed to be a panini maker but it comes with many more other attachments. This is the Salter brand. I'm going to turn it on and I'm supposed to wait for the green light to come on then I'll know it's ready to put our waffles and these are the waffle attachments. It comes with a griller and also the sandwich ones so we are going to use the waffle ones. So we are going to close it and wait for the button to turn green. Then we shall pour in our butter that's ready. It's ready now. I'm pouring my cake, my waffle butter into here. I'm using a cup, the half cup to pour. I'm not sure whether it's the right thing. I don't need to fill them up much, but I know it will also spread once I cover it up. Just add a bit more. I should have used a pouring spoon, but that didn't happen. I'll use this because I'm using one hand the other hand is holding the camera so let's let it cook the waffle was actually ready I should have filled it up more so it could have filled this place but they look delicious now the blueberries have all softened and they are oozing out the color in the waffles yeah I'm going to serve the kids and I'll be serving them with some maple syrup the kids love it 
I'll show you a picture of what they look like. I've attached a narrower foot so it allows us to use a smaller seam allowance and I think by with this we shall be using 2 over 8 which is a quarter 2 over 8 which is a quarter an inch is it an inch yes a quarter an inch seam allowance and we're going to sew I think that's the maximum seam allowance we shall use the fact that we don't have our band is not so long so we shall be careful as we sew Remember, take out the pins. I'll make sure this comes to the very edge. The foot comes to the very edge of our fabric. I'm going to take out the pins. And I'm going to sew all around. <laughs> it's going to be a long one. Hope my bias tape will be enough. So I'm getting it to the very edge which helps me choose that small width for seam allowance because if I had left my ordinary foot I wouldn't be able to easily get that small bit 2 over 8. What I've decided to do I just sewed up the bias binding to just the top bit. This is the opening and this is a round one. Let me show you the, what it looks like. This is a round place. I just thought I'll first finish the edge here because it would be hard to turn it at the corner then get it up and round. So what I've decided to do is to first sew up this part, the bottom one. So I'm going to turn them. I've already sold it to right side, the, the binding to the right side. So I'm going to turn it and then sew it under. And it's what you are working with. The seam is quite so small. So I'll see whether to sew it upside down or the other way around. But I need to attach this now and that's what I'm going to work on. Then I'll be able to use this. And probably I'll first go into the inner circle, the smaller circle we cut out. Do the same thing to it. And then work on the sides too. Okay. I've actually sewed up the bottom. I turned the bias tape. Finished it up. I've also done the round small circle we made. I just wanted to make sure that I have enough bias tape. For it, I've also sewed up the inside, went straight first time with the bias facing on the right side, then turned it, and it's well finished actually, it looks neat, hope the camera can focus, I'll take my face out, see that guy, yeah, hope that's clear. So now I'm going to go attach on the side, it looks like a little girl's dress actually, it would be a cute dress, but no, it's for the Christmas tree. It actually looks good, I was bothered by the fact that I had it lined it up but i think this will still work perfect sometimes you don't have to complicate things i'm now going to go ahead and finish up the sides and that will be it i think i'll say goodbye to my sewing machine until tomorrow i'm not sure if i'll be sewing anything on saturday but probably i'll come and sew up something but it looks like a little girl's skirt so we're going to finish up the sides i think it's all clear to us and i thought of something i might actually add red snaps to the ends so it encloses with snaps because anything that's fast and easy works for me but still I could leave it open and just flip it over itself after all the seams would be finished. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up this end and I'll show you what it looks like after. We're going to go ahead and attach the bias tape on both sides of this of the skirt. This was the part that we cut straight from the smaller circle to the big one and I thought I'll show you close up just in case you need a close up view. just going to pin it up here with pins if you can tell I'm fond of pinning myself but I'll be careful poking myself with pins And I've got a few people watch my videos who don't so much that sometimes I assume that some steps are much clearer to everyone, but I've been asked before to explain what exactly I've done in a particular step. So I thought I would record this short one, show you how I've been attaching this bias step. I just folded it off by itself, so it's just a single bias step. After failing to get, it's not a single bias step, after failing to get a a single bias step just decided to fold the, the strip in half 
and I didn't let that stop me too. I also didn't let it waste a lot of my time. In the past, I would have struggled and fought until I achieved whatever I wanted, but I'm learning to take life much easily. I've learned not to complicate things. Life shouldn't be complicated. So if something doesn't work out, don't sweat it. Let it be. Let it go and figure out what works. So we've come to the end. We are going to sew this first one on camera and I show you how I got around to sewing it with a small bias, with a small sewing foot. Okay, let me adjust the camera for you to see. Yep, so we're going to go ahead and so I'll try to keep my hands out of the way. And it's important to remove the pins at the right time, which I often forget and sew over them. I either break needles or bend the pins, or sometimes I survive making any. So let's get sewing. I'm making sure that this is lining up to the edge, the fabric, the bias tape and the fabric are all lining up at the edge. With that I know I'll get a good seam. I'm using a quarter an inch seam allowance. Because this foot is quite small, so it can enable me to do that. So that's what I've been doing all around. In the round is only because the round took forever to sew up. But this is much easier. I'll advise when you're cutting the bias tape. I'll advise when you're cutting bias tape to leave a bit of a tail. Because with that we want to be able to fold it in while we sew. So I've left a bit of a tail here. We're going to sew this down and I've rolled and left a tail a bit. So I fold down the tail. I've sewn the first time, the first round. Folding it down and then folding it over. I know it's quite bulky there, but we shall figure out what to do with it. Okay, we shall put it in my machine. It might be a struggle to sew over, but we could reverse it. What with the neatest, but it's all right. If you accept that it's all right, it's all right. So I've accepted it that it's going to be all right because I've left quite little. I might have to roll over the fabric a bit more, so I get a much finer finish. At this point, because I'm working with so many layers of fabric at that point, so and also the seam allowance is quite long, so I'm going to roll it and leave a bit of fabric here. Let's get going. a struggle to sew over so it didn't make it that neat but it doesn't matter because the seam allowance is not so big I'm having to pull onto the fabric also roll it over so I can cover the raw edges This brings us to the end of today. This is Vlogmas date 11. I'm pretty much exhausted and I'm glad it's a Friday. I'm going to have a lay-in tomorrow. And I've completed the, this Christmas tree cutting. No, I've not attached snaps because I'm no longer inspired to do anything more. So I'm going to put it on the Christmas tree and we will see what it looks like before and after. Thank you for hanging out with me and if you're watching this video, and you're not subscribed to my channel please go ahead and subscribe and and press the bell icon so you're notified whenever i upload a new video okay see you later bye see you tomorrow stay blessed so well